Hi, I'm Steve from Foiling Magazine, and uh, we're at uh, AWSI 2022. I'm here with Kel from Armstrong Foils, and uh, just wanted to talk about what's new and what's upcoming for Armstrong and the rest of 22 and uh, on into the 2023 year. So, Kel, what's new and exciting for us? Yeah, so happy to be here and thanks for coming by. So we've got two new products um, and we've got a performance mast range um, and we've got a new board, the WKT. And uh, those, the WKT will be coming out uh, later this month and the mast range will be coming on a little bit later in the year. Fantastic, so um, I, got to, I got to wing foil on this mast uh, yesterday and it's pretty remarkable. I mean, one of the things that I found was that in addition to being incredibly stiff, it was incredibly smooth through the water. You know, no, no turbulence, no, um, you know, just no ventilation. It was just really exceptional. So um, I was excited. Do you want to comment on any of uh, the special, special sauce inside this guy? Yeah, definitely. So kind of going a little bit further back, I'm sure you know this, but for, uh, for those who might not know, uh, Army Armstrong, our founder, his background is in uh, sailing. He's, his whole family's been in sailing. Um, and then he has uh, quite a number of years of materials expertise. And so when you combine sailing and materials expertise, there's a lot of cross application to hydrofoils. Um, now being down in New Zealand, uh, Army is good friends with the America's Cup New Zealand team. And they are long and away the most technologically advanced and sophisticated designers and engineers of foils like on the planet. They're building foils for incredible racing boats. So when the performance mast idea came up to make something that's faster, stiffer, lighter, more efficient, um, those are the natural guys to pair up with. So Army has been working for about a year um, with a couple designers uh, from the America's Cup uh, resources that they have down there. And these masts have been product tested by, uh, you know, Jimmy Spittle, uh, Peter Burling, uh, America's Cup guys, right? exactly Blair Took, and so this thing comes from a really high tech um, technology, materials, and engineering background, combined with Army's expertise in hydrofoils. So that's a little bit of the background groundwork for you. Um, the big, Go ahead. yeah, the the big engineering topic uh, with regard to this mast was tackling ventilation, um, and so the whole idea with ventilation is. As the mast is running through the water and through the surface of the water, certain masts, you know, the, they will draw air down, right? They'll draw air from the surface down the mast, and that'll disrupt the flow that's that's going around the rest of the foil. So that creates drag. Um, it also can change uh, your ride, uh, especially if you're trying to do radical things. Um, so that's a that, that was a big uh, mission in, to uh, to tackle with these masts was was addressing ventilation. Well, I, I think you achieved it. It was incredibly quiet, but. So the one I rode was a 93. Mm -hmm. So when do these come out? Uh, roughly, I, maybe I know with all su supply chain issues and this and that, but what, when do these come out and then what sizes will they ultimately be available in? Right, so right now the, the 935, the 93 and a half okay. centimeter mast will be coming out a little bit later this year, not too far out, but a little bit later. Um, and I can tell you that there are going to be two other sizes at the moment. There's one, going to be one that's a little bit longer and one that's a little bit shorter. Okay, great. Fantastic. Well, it, it's really incredible. Uh, but let's, let's move along. So you've got this exciting thing right here. And uh, down where I live near Jacksonville, Florida, we've got uh, some of the most incredible wake foilers and, and uh, you know, tow foilers around. So can you tell me a little about this? I've seen, I've seen this prototype on the water, actually, but this is the real thing. So. Yeah, exactly. So you've probably been seeing uh, Austin Toby, who's, Austin our, Toby, yeah. who's our, our wake maniac, amazing, extraordinary rider. Um, I think uh, the last time I heard he's working on a double backflip right now. That's right. I um, think he's in a race to complete that, right? So, exactly. Uh, I'm sure he will. You know. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so he's been uh, integral in, in uh, testing uh, for the WKT. But WKT, so what does that stand for? So it's wake, kite, and tow. And this is a board that's really been uh, four years in the making, actually. Um, so down in New Zealand, um, Army's got a, a friend who's, who's an ambassador of ours um, who loves riding really thin, really short boards, towing, uh, and also kiting. Um, and of course, you know, when you ride a thinner board, 
you have more sensitivity, more reactivity, you're closer to the foil, and it gives you just a really upgraded experience riding a foil. But also more things that could potentially break, right? I mean, uh, being so thin and trying to handle the forces right. of the foil. Right, exactly. And so, you know, this board's only an inch thick. Um, you know, if you're if you're looking at it from the side, it, you almost can't see the profile. Right, right. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite thin, and it does actually have even a little bit of recessed deck. Um, but you know, they've gotten around that uh, by creating a pretty trick uh, molded carbon construction. And actually something that's really interesting. So this shares a lot in common with our mass top construction. Oh, wow. So the solidity that you get in the mass top construction has been translated across into this board. Uh, now, of course, it's been done pretty strategically. So the board doesn't weigh a ton, um, but it is incredibly solid because it's meant to be able to land airs uh, like what Austin Toby would be doing. Awesome. So you've got you've got this. This is pretty uh, dedicated. Well, let me say it's W K T, and then P. It is W K T with a silent P at the end. Because you said yeah. yesterday you were pumping this. Uh, exactly. So, so it works for pumping just as well. Huh? It works great for pumping because uh, when you're pumping, of course, you don't really want to board, especially if you're doing a dock start, uh, right? Because all you're looking is for something to attach you to the foil, and that's about it. Um, and, and then what did you, so you did this yesterday here in Hood River, and and what foils were you using? What what style of foil? So we were riding a bit of everything. I mean, it works for everything. Uh, I was personally riding our uh, CF V2 2050. You want to tell us a little about the CF CF line? Yeah, certainly. So for those who are or maybe aren't familiar with Armstrong, uh, the original range that was released a number of years ago was called CF. It was Carving Free Ride. Um, I didn't know that. I just know it's CF, so. Yeah, yeah, so CF stands for carving free ride, HS stands for high speed, and HA stands for high aspect. So earlier this year, when we released CF V2, it is in many ways a, a V2 uh, to CF. It succeeds the original CF line, but it's very different in many other ways. Um, and without getting into all the details, it retains all of the essential qualities that makes the original CF range great. It's super user friendly. It's all about fun, and it gives you a really wide range of use across all the sizes. Um, but now the performance range is pushed further in both directions. I would say so much so that you've seen some of your top team riders in some YouTube clips choosing to use this. You know, we were just talking Austin Tovey. I've seen him ride this. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, a few other guys that are, uh, you know, pretty high-end riders have, have actually chosen this, and they say it's just easy. And that was my experience uh, yesterday when wing foiling it was it. Just a plain, easy foil. Absolutely. No, you're you're 100 percent correct. Uh, Austin Tovey loves the CF 950. Was that even part of the design brief, by the way, to have these guys like it? Uh, I think it, it, that's where it started. Yeah. Oh, I really? That's okay. where it started. And you know what's funny actually is uh, I was talking to Army recently, and he's telling me all he's been riding uh, has been the CF 950. Oh, really? So even Army loves it. Wow. That's and it's just it works. It's super fun, and you can go out and rip on it. So you can be a beginner, and you can be an expert. You can you can use that one foil all, all the way through your entire foiling experience. Exactly, and and you know like with everything that's uh, Armstrong, it's made to last, and it's all cross compatible. So you yeah. get one, you step, you step, you just get your toes wet in the family, but you can actually upgrade, you know, through and through. So before I let you go, I have one final question. You know, these are, these are things that are coming out now, but I can see something and I, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to reveal it yet, but I know you're, you guys are always testing. So what I see over there is a, uh, can I share? It's, it's a downwind board, you know, and, uh, sure have is. you ridden it? Uh, you don't have to share, you know, uh, too much, but, uh, I heard that you and Oscar were out the other day. So uh, can you share a little bit about what's, what might be coming down the pipe? Yeah, absolutely. So downwind boards are pretty hot at the moment. Um, downwind boards are pretty hot at the moment. And um, just- do you, do you think downwind is an actual, I mean, is, is it worth making a production board? Is it a real thing? I know it's a real thing in the gorge and, and in Maui, but I mean, is, is, is this a sport that's actually gonna happen? Yeah, well, the thing with downwind is I think even though it may be a small percentage of people that are currently doing it at the moment, it has a future. And that future lies in making gear that's more accessible. Right? It's all about designs that make it easier and more possible to get on the water. Uh, and so what I can tell you about the board right now is that two weeks ago, I was riding a board with 40 more liters than that. Oh, wow. 
And now I'm riding this and I'm very comfortable. And it's something that I thought I would never be able to do at this point in my progression with sub downwind foiling. And uh, um, I know we're digressing a bit, but what size foil did you start with for downwind? And then what size foil would you use today on, a, on the new type of prototype boards? Yeah, absolutely. So I started out on a large high aspect that was very competent at low speeds. And right now I'm riding what you could, could consider a smaller, very fast high aspect. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks. This is all exciting. You know, the, the new mast is extraordinary. You've got the high-end stuff uh, and you've got uh, stuff that everybody can use and you got a little bit coming down the line. So thanks, Kel. Thanks for, uh, for introducing us to it all. Thanks, Steve.